So with that said, uh, Tom, Farrell, let me come back to you so that you can help us uh, understand how you built this hobo campfire. Yeah, I apologize for the delay. I was <laughs> not, not quite ready with the phone. Can everybody see clear enough? Yeah. Um, this was the uh, model. One disaster after another. Here we go. <laughs> this is the uh, <laughs> this was the hobo. We'll call it a diorama, which will eventually go on my rustic buff, an old Gothic railroad. There's the campfire that Jim was referring to, and this is the this is the little. I call this Camp McCoy, after my college roommate, just to bust his stones one more time. <laughs> <laughs> so the question came up is, how'd you do that campfire? And um, it, it really takes less than a couple, three to five minutes and I can build that thing and I'll show you. I, uh, right before the show, just to show proof of concept, I did it again, just to refresh myself. Everybody see that? Yes. That was this evening's work. So here's how I just take a piece of wood, right? And I simply uh, cut little pieces up. I'll do okay to do this live, Jim. It'll only take five sure, minutes. Absolutely. Absolutely. Everybody see what I'm doing? I'm just cutting little pieces of wood, right? From a scrap. And they're about a quarter of an inch long. And I just, I'm gonna split a few of them. We're just creating the, the wood, really. We've lost your uh, view of what you're doing there. Now we're back. Okay, so um, basically I'm just cutting up little scraps of wood to make the campfire, okay? Right. Then I take some super glue and I uh, make a little ball of super glue, okay? about a oh, three eighths of an inch in diameter. And I just sprinkle the wood onto the super glue, okay? And I'll put a little glob onto that. I usually use thin super glue for this stage right here, but I'm in the process of moving and I couldn't find my thin glue. <laughs> so I'm gonna put an accelerator on here uh, stop me if you don't, everybody knows what super glue accelerator is, right? Yeah. Okay, so now that's basically the basis of our campfire. And I'm next, I'm going to take this uh, black acrylic paint. Everybody see that? And now we're gonna take a little paint we're just gonna paint the center of this fire black, okay? So, pretty simple, right, so far? And um, now the secret to the fire, which I'm sure everybody realizes is nothing more than a cotton ball, which, you know, regular old cotton ball. And I just strand it out. Everybody see what I'm doing? And I'm going to take some more of my super glue. And I'm going to put another blob there, right in the middle. Super glue is a key ingredient to everything I do. And now we've got the basis for our quote fire. Yeah. We're just putting a little super glue around the base, okay? And a little more accelerator. And now, now we're gonna color the fire. And I use, normally I use acrylic paints. Um, they're inexpensive and I couldn't find an acrylic orange so I had to go to old school Floquil. But now we're just gonna basically create the fire. So we're gonna start with red. 
Let me shake my bottle here. So we've got little red. And you're just going to highlight the uh, highlight the base of the fire with red and a little up in the smoke, right? We're going to tone this down at, at the very end, it, um, but you don't have to, you know, it's pretty sloppy, really. And then uh, we're going to switch to a fluorescent yellow. So we just want to call attention to the fire. So is this all coming clear? I need some feedback if everybody can see what I'm doing. Yeah, it looks fine. Doing just great. Okay, well, we're a little high here on the fire. So there we go. And we're gonna tone this down with um, an alcohol wash when we're all done. Okay, now we're gonna add orange. Might look sloppy now, but in a minute here, we'll clean it up. This is the floquel. I can smell the poison coming out of the thing. Okay. So this is just orange. Okay. And now we're going to start toning this down a little bit because our colors are a little strong. So we're going to go back to our black and highlight some of that wood in black again. And then the final touch is a alcohol wash of my brush a little bit. And we just highlight the quote smoke with the alcohol wash. And the final thing we do is we go back to our cotton ball because we wanna have a, the illusion of more clear white smoke. And voila, you've got a blazing campfire <laughs> in five minutes. That's impressive. That is impressive. So that's how quickly it goes. And, um, you know, they make a nice addition to your, if you ever do a hobo camp, you can throw more, if you notice, I've, I mean, I did this one, the one I just did really fast, but I threw a couple extra logs on the fire here, basically. Yeah. But you get the general idea that, I always maintain that all these things are really simple. They're just a question of um, knowing how to do them, you know? Yeah. And um, I mean, that little, it's a pretty convincing fire for uh, five minutes of work, you know? <laughs> you know? No question about it. Tom, I really appreciate you taking the time to show us this tonight because I'm sure the modeler that had the question is impressed and probably now understands uh, how he might be able to build one himself. Yeah, and uh, thank you. And Now this same modeler had a second question I gotta ask you while you're here. Okay. How in the world do you package these dioramas for transport without having them totally destroyed once, once you get there? <laughs> like the last show? Yeah. Uh, um, basically, um, I, put each, there's, I put each one in a box. Well, first I put them in a plastic bag so that any of the packing materials uh, like styrofoam or something won't adhere to the model. So I put a, a clear plastic bag around the model. And then I, you know, just crumple up typically newspaper on the bottom of the box, cardboard box, and then set the model in. And then uh, maybe put peanuts all around it and you're in business. You know, you just, the, the idea is to keep it from getting crushed or, and it, so it's immobilized, so it won't move around, you know. And, uh, you know, I've moved, uh, this particular model was 
Oh shit, I just broke it. This um it's more dangerous than the workbench. <laughs> <laughs> this one I took to the uh Al Judy show and uh nothing got damaged right now. <laughs> it's um it's just really um they're all all my models, all my dioramas are on plywood basins. That helps too. And um I build on plywood bases and then put them on the railroad. And then if I happen to move, like I did last July, when I tore down my rustic buff and old Gothic railroad, I had all the models up in less than an hour. And there must've been, you know, there's lots of them, you know, they're all over the, my workbench. And, um, you know, I had the layout taken apart and out, all the buildings off in an hour. And uh, so it was for Al Judy's show roughly a month ago now. You know, I just selected a few, put them in a, put crushed newspaper in the bottom of a cardboard box, put the model in a bag, put styrofoam uh, out around the, uh, the bag and off we went. No, nothing got damaged really. So. Uh, well, that's fantastic. Like, thank you so much for sharing that. 